Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I'm very, very happy to have y'all here today. And I'm going to show y'all some very cool things today that I know you haven't seen. From scripture, from, of course, the book of Ruth. As well as some amazing things in the constellation. Really amazing things that line up with it. Now again, I'm working on my straight timeline. But here with Ruth, there's enough information that it just would have made my next video way too long again. And this is enough that it can easily be a video by itself. So I decided to break this part off for y'all. So that you get a really, really good understanding of some very, very cool things in Ruth that absolutely show our rapture date. So let's get into it. And so y'all all understand, I'm going to briefly be going through Ruth, but I'm going to be stopping and pinpointing on all the things that are really important for everybody to understand, because these are going to correlate with scripture for the rapture, but as well as things I'm going to show you in the constellations, okay? So stay with me on this because you're it's going to knock your socks off. It, I think it will. I always think that, but I really think this is very, very amazing. So as most of us know, in the beginning of the book of Ruth opens up with Naomi and her two daughter-in-laws, and they have all lost their husbands. And this is when Naomi decides to leave Moab and return to Jerusalem. And her two daughters-in-law both want to go with her. One's name is Oprah, and of course the other is Ruth. Now, Oprah decides to turn back after Naomi persuades her to go back to her home. But Ruth, Ruth refuses. Ruth says, no, I'm staying with you, Naomi. Naomi, she says, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. So here we see right away that Ruth was a Gentile. So, in Ruth 1.22, it says, So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, who returned from the country of Moab. Now, they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. So, we know right here that they first get to Jerusalem. It is just right after Passover, right after the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This is our first other big hint of the timing of all these things. So then we see in Ruth 2, there was a relative of Naomi's husband, and he was a man of great wealth. And he was of the family Elimelech, which means God is king. So Ruth goes to the field of Boaz to glean. So she's going and picking up anything that falls or is left behind of the harvesters in the field. If for any of y'all who don't know what gleaning is. So this is when Boaz sees her a little later in the day. He comes back from Jerusalem. And of course he notices her and he asks who she is. And the reapers tell him, you know, who she is. And she's a Moabite. And that she came back with Naomi. Now when we look at at Ruth 2 7 this is where it says and she said I pray you let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves so she came and hath continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little in the house so here of course we can see a correlation with Hebrews 10 37 where it says for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry so Boaz tells Ruth to not glean in any other fields, but to stay near his handmaidens and only glean from his field. Then he says to Ruth, The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust. And here again we see another parallel. 
Now, I've shown y'all this in one of my other Rapture videos on my same timeline that I've been showing y'all for the last two months. And in Mount Sinai, whenever God married the Jews. This is in Exodus 19.4 where he says, You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you out on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. So, again, as I've been showing y'all over and over in my rapture videos, God is going to carry his people on an eagle's wings to the tabernacle, to the most holy of holy places where we will dwell with our Lord. This is a direct correlation to our rapture. So, then Ruth says, Let me find favor in thy sight, my Lord, for thou hast comforted me. And he's been very kind and friendly to her. So then he tells her to come in and they all sit down and eat. They break bread together. And then in Ruth 2.15 it says, And when she was risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves and reproach her not. Well, what is very interesting is if we look at the Hebrew word on this for glean, it is to pick or gather up. I mean, I, I can see the correlation here. I'm sure y'all can as well very, very easily. So, what is very interesting as well, y'all may have noticed that I have been noticing. We always talk about, you know, that God, time for him, it, it's circular. It, it, does, it looks more like the Maseroth. It's not so much linear. So, we see things that repeat throughout history just like we see things that repeat on the same days days of importance or even God's feast days throughout history and time but what's interesting about in the Bible I see parallels so just here we see a parallel that's also with Esther right have I found favor in your sight and there's also some parallels with Jacob and and Leah and Rachel as well in here and it's just so wildly interesting it's just like an onion the Bible is just full of so many so many wonderful parallels it's amazing when you really start researching things what you find okay so with that said now Ruth of course she was able to gather a very large amount of barley it says about an epaph which is a very good amount for somebody who's poor, who's going around having to pick up just the scraps of whatever's left in the field. So she had definitely found favor in Boaz's sight. So she went to her mother-in-law, Naomi, and showed her all that she had gotten that day. And, you know, her mother-in-law, Naomi, was like, oh my goodness, you know, whose field were you in? And so she told him that she had gone and his name was Boaz. And she was like, oh, that's one of our next kinsmen. That's wonderful. So then Ruth um, told her mom that she had told, or her mother-in-law, that she had told him to stay there until the end of his harvest. And then Naomi said unto Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that thou go out with his maidens, that they meet thee not in any other field. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean unto the end of barley harvest and of wheat harvest and dwelt with her mother-in-law. So right here in Ruth 2.23, I decided, because it's a little confusing the way the scripture reads, because if you study the harvest, then you know that the barley harvest, when it kind of, ends is when the wheat harvest begins now granted there is a little bit of barley that still comes here and there but there there's definitely a cutoff where they switch at pentecost to harvest so i went to the original hebrew text on this passage specifically and so whenever we look at the original hebrew on this it says and the end of barley harvest and the wheat harvest so it's not saying the end of the barley harvest and the end of the wheat harvest because they're not both at the same time 
there's the end of the barley harvest and the beginning of the wheat harvest and that is what it's saying right here so this tells us that they're just about to be at the very beginning of the wheat harvest if they're not there already if this isn't exactly on that line and as we all know the beginning of the wheat harvest is shavat which is pentecost <laughs> and if you saw on my my video that i did about the god's calendar god's timeline i've shown you that a shavat on God's calendar absolutely lands on our Pentecost this year without a doubt okay so then Naomi she told Ruth that she needed to go to the threshing floor because Boaz would be there working during the night to winnow the barley Naomi told Ruth to wash herself and anoint her and then to go down to where Boaz was going to be. So we see right here that she's sanctifying herself. So she told Ruth to go and mark the spot that Boaz was going to be laying down. Now you, you need to remember this part because I'm going to show you something really interesting in the constellations here pretty soon. So it says, And it shall be when he lieth down, that thou shalt mark the place where he shall lie. And thou shalt go in and uncover his feet and lay thee down. And then after that, he will tell you what you should do. So she said, okay, I'll do everything that you tell me to do. And she went and she waited until after Boaz had eaten and drank. And he laid down to go to sleep at the end of where all the barley was lying. And she came in softly and uncovered his feet and she laid down. Now in Ruth 3, 8, it says, And it came to pass at midnight that the man was afraid and turned himself, and behold, a woman lay at his feet. Here again we have another parallel. And in as we see in Matthew 25, 6, it says, And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. So then Boaz asked who was there and Ruth said it's me and he said he would do everything that she asked. But what is interesting here is in Ruth 3.10 he said, And he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast shown more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or rich. And here again, we can see another parallel if we look at Isaiah 46.10, which says, Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So here in Ruth, we are seeing just an absolute ton of amazing parallels with so many things. It's, it's just amazing. Boaz tells Ruth to fear not because he and everybody in the town know that she is a virtuous woman. Again, this is of great importance. Just like the church body has to be virtuous as well. So he goes and says he has another kinsman that's a little bit near and he has to go talk to him first. But he's going to see what else he can do. And it's interesting here again because he says, Tarry this night and it shall be in the morning. That if he will perform unto thee the part of a kinsman, will let then him do the part. But if he will not do the part of the kinsman to thee, then I will do the part of a kinsman to thee. So then he tells her to lie down until the morning. What is also very interesting about this is that in the book of Ruth, three different times, three exactly, we have the word tarry. So then she lays at the, his feet until morning, and she rose up before one could know another. And he said, let it not be known that a woman came onto the floor. And then he told her to bring the veil that she had on her and to hold it. And she held it and he measured six measures of barley 
and he laid it on her and she went into the city so this is what's very very cool okay he gave her exactly six measures of barley so from the revelation 12 sign of 2017 which was in september this will be the sixth harvest shavat will be our sixth pentecost which of course shavat is the end of the barley harvest and the beginning of the wheat harvest exactly six this is not a coincidence okay so then ruth went and told her mother-in-law everything that had happened and gave her the barley that boaz had given her so she told her just you know wait he would take care of everything not to worry about it and then he would be letting her know as soon as he had gotten the matter at hand cleared up so in the meantime boaz went up to the gate and there he spoke to the kinsman that was closer to a relative of naomi that had first rights to not only redeem the land but take on naomi and ruth as well because that was part of it and of course this is also very important so he took 10 men of the elders of the city and said sit ye down here and they sat down so this 10 is important and i'm going to show you why in the constellations in just a minute so needless to say the kinsman who was closer to naomi said he couldn't redeem it at first he said he could redeem the land but then he said no because he would mess up his own inheritance if he took the land and naomi and ruth as part of it so then boaz said that he would do it and so they agreed by exchanging sandals because that's how they did things back at that time then said boaz what day thou buy the field of the hand of naomi thou must buy it also of ruth the moabitess the wife of the dead to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance and that's of course when he the kinsman said i can't redeem it for myself lest i mar my own inheritance and tells him to redeem it so uh, boaz of course took on the land of naomi and of course took ruth to be his wife and then it says and all the people that were in the gate and the elders said we are witnesses the lord make the woman that has come into thine house like rachel and like leah which too did build the house of israel and do thou worthily and be famous in bethlehem so ruth and boaz had a child they had a son and that son his name was obed and he was the father of jesse who was the father of david okay now here is the part where i get to show you what is going on in the constellations and this correlates with everything that we just went over in ruth so on may 9th there is a conjunction between the bride and ruth now remember also may 9th is ascension day it's the day that jesus ascended to heaven now you can see right here bruce and the bride are together and they are right at the feet of aries now aries represents the lamb of god or our savior who takes away the sins of the world and just like i showed you in ruth where she marked the spot and laid at the feet of boaz we see ruth at the feet of our lord and savior as well as the bride now also on the 10th may 10th we're still in this conjunction with ruth at the feet of aries and again let me remind you now this is when the moon is going to be dark for two nights just like jesus was in his tomb for two nights 
Now, nobody come at me with that sign of Jonah crud or, you know, the high Sabbath. I've already covered all that and proven that uh, the first day of one of the seven feasts is not a high Sabbath. The only one that can be considered a Sabbath, and it's a Sabbath, a Sabbaton, is Yom Kippur. Other than that, a Sabbath is only the seventh day of the week, Saturday. And I've proven it multiple times through many different things. If you haven't seen those videos, go see it. Don't bother leaving me any comments because I've proven I'm right about this. And it is important that we understand this. Now, needless to say, it is pretty amazing. You have to admit that Ruth and the bride on this date, on May 9th, are sitting right below the feet of our Savior. Just like we read in there. It's just, you, you can't make this stuff up. It's just crazy unbelievable. Now, also remember what we read about with the ten witnesses. The ten witnesses in Ruth that we just that will bring us to May 19th for Israel May 18th for us with the which of course is Pentecost the Shavat leads us right there as well the other thing to remind y'all of looking at this picture right here is on May 9th don't forget that it is Rachel that is at the very top of this ladder, almost. Well, you know, all the way to the shepherd, if you remember. The shepherd, where Rachel married Jacob. Jacob's ladder. That's also what we're seeing right here. Now, as well, on May 9th, what you're going to see right here when we're in this conjunction with Ruth. Now, right below us, this is the Sea of Stars, where we see the... 12p ponds brooks comet now this comet is shining a spotlight on the sea of stars now, if you saw in my other rapture videos in mount sinai whenever the jews were wed there was the river that came out from mount sinai and we also i showed already showed y'all in scripture where there is a river that descends from heaven and this is absolutely what this river of stars represents. And that is why the comet is so significant exactly at this time as well. Now, I am fully aware that NASA refers to this comet as the Devil's Comet. But it is the last thing I will be referring to it as. This comet comes from the Lord and it is a spotlight. And it grows brighter and brighter closer to our rapture date and it is a sign it is a sign in the heavens above and the stars for us to be watching and what we are supposed to be looking for I'm not going to refer to anything that comes from the Lord as anything from Satan and I hope y'all don't either as well now on May 11th this is when we should be seven days from our rapture date seven days from pentecost seven days from shavat you're gonna see right here that the bride is just now starting to leave its conjunction with ruth but what you're gonna see with the moon again it is in the twins more specifically it is in the twin that represents esau that represents the gentiles jacob represents the jews Esau represents the Gentiles. And I think it's significant that as well at this point when the moon is reborn that it is sitting in the Gentiles. So then, of course, on May 18th, since we're just really talking about Ruth in this video, we can see that Ruth stays right below Aries, even though the bride has moved into its conjunction with Uranus, which of course represents the kingdom of heaven. The bride is with the kingdom of heaven, or in the kingdom of heaven, sitting right next to Jupiter, our king. And if you didn't see my other videos yet, you should go look at them on the one on Shavat and Pentecost. Now, one thing I forgot to mention in there when I was talking, I just assumed everybody would understand what I was getting at. When I was talking about the barley and how the barley 
was able to grow differently than the wheat. You've got to remember in that video, the barley represents the Old Testament saints. So if you go back and watch that when I'm speaking about the barley and its hardiness and to climate and everything, and you realize it's talking about the Old Testament saints, that's why I was laughing kind of in that because it fits it perfect, right? God knew us before we were born. We were put here in this time for a reason because God knew that we were made for a time such as this. The other thing, if you all didn't notice, whenever I was doing my video on Jacob's ladder, I showed a clip where Jacob, he rolls away the stone and he waters all of the sheep. Well, that is a direct parallel with whenever the tomb was rolled back by the angel for Jesus and Jesus he has been watering his sheep with everlasting water a water that makes you where you never thirst again if y'all recall from scripture so we see so many parallels through the Bible if you don't remember that part go back and watch um, my video on Jacob's ladder and then you'll understand so with the bride, it looks like representing the wheat, you'll also see and understand how it can't grow in harsh climates as well as barley, as barley can, which is pretty funny. Anyway, so I forgot to mention though, sometimes I, you know, start going down a path and showing y'all things and I forget to elaborate completely on them so y'all so y'all have a full understanding because I just assume everybody's on my my wavelength at the time which is silly because no one no one's on somebody else's wavelength all the time so I'm sorry I'll try and do better about explaining all these things so if y'all see me chuckle at something there's something I'm thinking about and I'm gonna try to get where I don't forget to share <laughs> And assume everybody knows what exactly I'm referring to. Okay, well, I'm working on my other timeline video. Hey, if y'all have not seen my other rapture videos, look, my timeline hasn't changed. I just got confirmation over confirmation showing why the rapture is going to be on this Pentecost, the Shavat. Why Pentecost and Shavuot are on the same day and how on God's calendar and how people are wrong in messing it up when they're trying to go an entire month ahead. And another thing with that as well, with God's calendar, which you've got to realize, all last year, the, the feast and everything, they were on point. Towards the very end of the year, it was off by just about a day, maybe two in there. But through all last year, everything with the Jews calendar was exactly on target. Now, the reason they're slightly ahead right now is because they've added the extra month. They added Adar too. And so that's put them slightly ahead. And then it'll start to balance out again. Um, but anybody who's trying to say, you know, like consistently that the, month, the Jews are a month ahead on their calendar aren't understanding God's calendar at all. They're looking at the wrong things completely. So if you don't understand that, I've done two different videos showing how God's calendar works. And we go from scripture. It has nothing to do with what sun, the sun, what constellation the sun is in. Absolutely not. It has to do with the harvest. It has to do with the new moon. From that very first new moon went on Mount Sinai. This is what cre what God has commanded for his calendar. And so we know exactly where it is. And we know that our Pentecost is exactly right this year. And it exactly fits with Shavuot. And again, we also know that this is when the God married the Jews. When he made this covenant with them on Mount Sinai. We know that this is whenever our first Pentecost, when the church was born. So it undoubtedly, I believe with everything in my heart, this is it. And again, I've just shown y'all again why it's this year with the six barley, the six barley, this being the sixth one. We have the correlation of the midnight cry. We have the correlation of the wings of an eagle. We also have a correlation of the maidens where Ruth was in the field with the other maidens. 
We have so many different correlations and parallels. It's just amazing. So I wanted to do this video for y'all and not keep, have it be too long. And I am still working on another timeline video right now where I'm going to kind of try and show everything that I've shown in the last few videos as well as the little things that go into tribulation as well that I see in the constellations with a little extra more for y'all. Remember, Enoch re represents the Gentiles and he was born and he was raptured on Pentecost, on Shavuot. Again, we see here with David. David was born on Shavuot and he died on Shavuot. So, We've got a double correlation there as well. All right. So if you have not, please subscribe to my channel or follow me. Leave me a nice comment. Leave me a like and share this video. It helps me so much. I appreciate you all. I hope y'all are getting excited as I am. I'm sure like me, most of y'all can feel it. Y'all can feel it coming. And another thing, y'all, that I would suggest staying away from the fear mongering videos the ones you know world war three is about to happen and all this nonsense world war three is not going to happen we know from scripture that doesn't come up for quite a little while okay one last thing i have to bring up to y'all i had a question on this from someone and it was a question on taking the lord's name in vain does that mean just using the lord's name as a cuss word no it does not mean just using the lord's name as a cuss word if we look at the Hebrew on it, which is what we should always do for translations, it means to bring to emptiness. A problem a lot of people have is they will take the word like vain or vanity and they will look in the English dictionary for what it means. And that's not where we find the true meaning from the Bible. So we need to go to the Hebrew for it. Now, this means bringing his name to emptiness at all. Now, remember... Also, with Moses and the Israelites at the Mount Sinai, for and all through Judges, they had the Ark of the Covenant with them. They had the Lord with them as soon as they made the, the Ark of the Covenant, which was while they were out Mount Sinai. But the Lord dwelt with them. They heard his voice audibly. And this is when they came to understand the commandments and could actually talk to God. There is a reason it was punishable by death to take the Lord's name in vain, meaning to bring it to emptiness, to use it without cause, without justification. So if you're not talking to our Father, and you're not talking directly about our Father, then you are bringing his name to emptiness. And it is the same thing with Jesus' name. So yes, it is much more than just using it as a cuss word. It's using it in passing at all. And granted, I've heard some of my favorite, one of, at least one of my favorite pastors, try and say that it meant something else. But um, we know, we know that this is, it's right here. And it's right here for you. So I hope that answers that question. And again, I love you all, and I will see y'all very soon. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I think, I really hope it blessed some of y'all. And we are getting so close, and this is just one small, one small piece, one small piece to fit that shows and proves that Pentecost Shavuot is our rapture date. There's even more passages from the Bible that I might go into as well to show it to show some more to y'all we'll see how much i can get done in this sh this few days that we have left everybody be kind to each other be kind in the comments <laughs> please be nice to each other pray love the lord with all your heart and if you haven't seen my other videos please do and i pray that y'all are getting baptized if you have not been i really do because again, you have to remember, the apostles baptized. Jesus taught them and told them to baptize with water. They continued to baptize with water after his resurrection. They were giving a supernatural understanding from God of understanding the scriptures. It's not that difficult. You can look at my, my baptism video. And the big question is, why wouldn't anybody? 
Christian not want to be baptized. I love you all, and I will see you all in the next video. I'm sorry I keep bringing it up. It's only because I'm at the point of almost pleading with some of y'all because I care about you that much. Are you going to trust what the Bible says, or are you going to put all your trust in what man, what you heard some man say to you? That's what it boils down to, and we've each got to make our decisions, and I pray you each make the right one. I will see you soon.